you look back at the Hawkeye Wrestling Club and the legacy, it's still going right now and, and still kicking out world team members. What would you say the lasting legacy of that club is for the entirety of the sport? Well, I think that I, I think that what it did at the time, and, and, and a lot of th things when you talk about a perfect storm or, or a lot of things, timing is everything, okay? Is that <clears throat> there were other clubs around at the time, uh, San Francisco Olympic Club, Cyclone Wrestling Club, okay, um, Sunkiss Kids, okay? There were other cl clubs around, but I think, I think, what the Hawkeye Wrestling Club did under Kurtlemeyer was codified everything, brought things together under kind of a, a, a roof of we're going to do this. And then I think, I think that the people were, that were at Iowa at the time, right, whether it be Gable or me, or we saw, and Kurtlemeyer, we saw the benefit of, of the closeness of the senior guys and the young guys and how that bonding and that inner working, okay, could work to the benefit of making something that you couldn't get anywhere else. You know, and then, and, and then you look at it is that at the time you could go into the wrestling room and you could have practice and you could wrestle with the team, okay? Well, what, what's happened is that when you, when you, when you did that, you see these guys progressing because of all the good people they're wrestling against. Okay? So, so if, if you want to see the value of it, then look on the opposite side. This is a different way to look at it. But the NCA then comes in and says, okay, club guys can't wrestle during, during college practices anymore because these other, these other universities around the country couldn't get people to come in. So in essence, Iowa, the, Iowa and Iowa State and Michigan, Michigan, Michigan State, they had those guys coming in. They had an unfair advantage because the reason these guys are coming in, there is a value there. There is a value and you could see the value. You could see, the, see how having a club like that is going to give your team a better chance at the NCAA. So, and then, and, and not, not necessarily bad but then you have a lot of the have nots you know then trying to legislate against it instead of going out I mean I mean you have a lot of times is that you you find something that's very it's up here and and these these people can come up here but they got to go out and raise money and do all these extra stuff or it's easier to make rules and pull these guys down and I and that's what happened in in the beginning, you could go in the we could go in the wrestling room, and so Chris Campbell's wrestling, wrestling with a freshman, and I'm wrestling with a guy, and then I, I wrestle for two or three times, and Chris is wrestling for people, and so you have all these guys. Okay, Shallus is in there wrestling with guys, and they're getting better and tougher because of, why? Because of their competition, so they got to try harder, right? So then, some of the have-nots, so to speak, are going to complain. Okay, is that it's an unfair advantage. You can't do that. So then they start passing rules that eliminated that. Okay. Which which then kind of in essence hurt the clubs to a degree too. You know. And so it just it kind of depends where you sat on the ladder, you know, of what you wanted to do. Is that go out and raise some money and get three or four or five assistant coaches? Have them come in the and room, and your guys are going to get a whole lot better, a whole lot faster. But some coaches didn't want to do it. 